So anyway, we were talking about a specific event. You were talking a little bit about a specific event, and I was emphasizing the importance of specific events. And in the end of my book, The Personal Peace Procedure, we discuss a very important but intro way to go about a specific event. Okay, There is a sentence that we give you, um, and it goes like this. The moment when, and then you fill in the event itself, whatever mm -hmm. details you remember. The moment when, as you were saying, I woke up and my mother wasn't there. Mm -hmm. that, that would be accurate so far? Yes. Okay. So the moment when, what happened, and I currently feel the emotion about it. Now, when we were talking a few minutes ago before we recorded, you were talking about how you felt then. Yeah, I probably didn't say it right. All right, well, go current, ahead. Current intensity of my emotions at the moment. At Not this... when I was 18 months old. Okay, at this moment, okay. Yes. And so what label would you give that emotion? Um... Lost, complete lost. All right. Um, would there be other words for lost, like um, uh, afraid, like guilty, like embarrassed, like? No. Mm -mm. I tried different adjectives. The only one that would fit the feeling, it's feeling lost. Okay, feeling lost. Okay. What about the word abandoned? Yes, I can use abandoned. How about the word rejected? No, not rejected because I just don't understand rejection at that. Like I don't, I don't feel like it's um, it has any connection to the feeling. It makes sense, well, but it's there is just lost. That's okay. that's the. Mm -hmm. All right, what I'm picking up. And always correct me because all I can do here, Sadie, because I don't know your whole life story. Right. And I can't get it in one conversation. Okay. Is that I have to do some guessing. So mm -hmm. if I guess something and I'm not right mm -hmm. or I'm not on target, you need to tell me. Otherwise, we're going to go in some door that's just not going to be. Right. Used. Exactly. All right. So, mm -hmm. but. When you were talking about being lost, that says to me that's how you felt then at age 18. That's not how you feel now when you go remember it. No, well, that's ex that's exactly what I'm feeling now. It's lost. Oh, okay, but, lost. But when I say rejected, because I try different adjectives, like throwing them out and just uh, go with the feeling. Do they sure. feel right to me? Sure. Even though they sound good and incorrect do they feel right to me no rejection didn't for some reason didn't you know didn't do okay anything. well you started this conversation off before we recorded with the fact that you are easily rejected you're very sensitive to rejection that's why i brought it up yeah that makes sense yeah okay so uh, and i'm always looking for something that's very foundational mm -hmm. and that would seem to seem to be but you have to correct me Pretty foundational. You wake up, no mother. Uh, uh, where is she? Lost. Okay. Okay. Lost, lost, lost. Um, but isn't that a rejection as well? If mother's not there, she's just gone? Um, I don't think so. Because rejection, it's, um, it's knowing. Um, it's like let's say she would do something to me like she would say something to me or she would her i mean i know her action was would feed the rejection but she didn't say anything to me maybe that is why oh, i don't okay. know okay all right all right well oftentimes abandon and rejection are cousin terms you know so but anyway anyway got it lost yeah. lost okay so let's go back to the sentence for the moment because we're talking okay. about efficiency um and the way we stated this to begin with is the moment when 
I woke up and my mother wasn't there. Mm-hmm. That's the, but those were my words. Yeah. Uh, would you change those words? No. Your words are on target. Exactly. All right. So you're 18 months old. You wake up. Your mother isn't there. Well, I can. I mean, I was 18 months old myself. I would wake up and mother may not have been there. It may have been a babysitter. It may have been my father. It may right. have been nobody. I, may, you know, I went my diapers or whatever. And, you know, that kind of thing happens. Mm-hmm. So is there, I mean, to wake up and have nobody there is not unusual in itself. At least that's the way I'm seeing it. Mm. Yes. So is I there think. is there something else going on? Yes, probably after a conversation with my with my grandmother, who delivered me that message, along with, um, you know, she's um, she's she's not here. She left you. Okay, when you're 18 months old and you wake up and nobody's there, a child could conclude that my mother's not here. She left. Me. Right. Right. Um, I'm thinking more like when your grandmother says, you know, your, right, right, your exactly. mother, your mother just left, you know. Yeah, yeah. That that's when you'd say, oh, I'm rejected. What, I, that, reje- I am rejected. Yes. I am abandoned. My okay. Yes. So it's so just it's from an efficiency point of view. Mm-hmm. That's we we need to start questioning that because we when we plateau, we've got to question how well are we doing the basics. That's the first thing we do. Okay. How well are we doing the basics? All right. So we've got the lost part in there. Mm-hmm. But we're probably going to need to shift, from what I'm hearing anyway, Yes. shift the actual event itself to when I was age whatever, and my grandmother said, oh, yeah, about 18 months, your, your mother just left, couldn't be bothered with you or whatever she said. So what was the last thing you remember you heard me say? So you said when we shift that uh, specific event from um, I wake up and then mom is not there to my grandmother said your mom left. Okay. All right. So And then that rejection just kicked in. Okay. Immediately. All All right. So let's get a little more specific still. To the best of your recollection, we do not have to have every word and every detail. Right, perfect, right. Okay. Uh, but as best as you can remember, how old were you when your grandmother said this thing? Between 18 months of 18 months and two years. What, you remember her saying this to you at age 18 months? No, like I said uh, before, I... Um, it's not my 100% recollection, but it's just from uh, um, interacting with her for many years and uh, hearing this story from different people. That's oh, okay. what my... Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the more sophisticated uses of our process is when we, like 18 months or so, when we our memory probably isn't yeah. very good, if you have any at all. Right. No, I, I agree. We can We can make it up. Because what mm-hmm. we're really interested in is the emotional response. Exactly. What actually happened, we can be wrong on that. But yes. what's important about it is whatever we are recalling, even if we're making it up, if it triggers us, yes, then it's worth working on. Yes. Okay. Yes. So since you don't have a precise recollection of what your grandmother may have said, please, for now, Mm -hmm. make it up, but use words that would, you know, really get to you, okay? Shake shake me up, right. Yeah. Your mother left you because you were a bad girl. All right. I'm going to write that down. Your mother left you because... You were a bad girl. Now, let me ask you. Oh, there's more. Can I add some more? Oh, yeah. You would never see her again. 
and then laughing hysterically. You will never see her again. And then the, the hysterical laughing. All right, now let me take that apart for the moment. Because I can see in there different pieces. Because we see what we want to do with our specific event um, is we want to get to a crescendo moment. We want to get to the really impactful moment. That's, that's what we really want. That's the center of the bullseye, okay? Mm -hmm. Other things are on the target, and we're, yeah, but if we can get to the center of the bullseye, that's where we really want to go, and that's best, okay? Now, I, I am imagining, I'm imagining here, so you have to correct me, that from all the things you said about your mother's, your grandmother's words, would be the hysterical laughing. Mm -hmm. That would be, from what I'm hearing anyway, that to a young girl would be the the dagger in the heart. The crush, yeah. Now, That's I, the crushing moment. Yeah, don't, don't crescendo, but don't let me impose that on you. Okay. If the words your mother left you because you were a bad girl, if that's the crescendo, we need to go there. Uh, you will no. never see her again. If that's the crescendo, we need to go there. Um, I would never see her again. That's very strong, very strong response. Laughing even more. Like, I would say that the highest one is that laughing after. Okay. So in a way, and again, correct me. Your grandmother is laughing at you. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Poor you. You're a bad girl and all that stuff. So see what you get. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, to me, it's more like what a wonderful joke I made. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, and, and who cares about your feelings? Exactly. Okay. All right. Which, of course, is a rejection. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So is lost the right term now? Anger. Anger's coming, came up to the surface. Rejection. Anger. And um, what would be the, uh, like, a, a harsher, like, a stronger word than anger? Rage. Rage. Exact. Yes, yes, exactly. Rage. It's almost like I want to, oh. Okay, as you're talking about it right now on a scale of zero to ten, what rate, what level of rage do you feel? Gosh, it's in a high number. I would say eight or even nine. All right. And as you are experiencing that, are there any physical symptoms along with it? You know, the, the chest gets tight, yes, the heart yes, beats. Yes, oh, oh, chest. Oh, oh. So chest, there's definitely a tightness in chest. My stomach, um, I can feel it's like it tightened. Um, I, I even like I feel like just for just for like a split of a second, like a, um, my hands, my feet, uh, yeah, started shaking. Hands and feet shake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, making, I'm making a little note here. Oh, and the throat. There is like something in my throat, which is like hard to swallow. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Now, when we talked about more efficient, uh, what we actually did here, and this is this comes with experience, uh, Sadie. Um, but the original, the, you see, the original specific event you were working on isn't as accurate as or focused as the one we shifted to. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. I do. One, one is I I woke up, but I don't remember anything. My mother wasn't there. Well, I mean, that's okay. There's nothing really wrong with that. You don't get bad grades for that or anything. But with more experience, you'll get down to the point where you'll get more focused still. And the grandmother's comment seems more focused. At least to me, it does. A am yes. I right? Yes. 
And then when we get to the actual emotion, it isn't really lost. I mean, you are you are big time anger, rage. Yes. With a bunch of physical symptoms attached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that is why you can come from a 10 to a 5, which for me is like taking the edge off. You did something with it. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. You have a little more peace on it. But you really didn't get down to what's really, really there. Mm -hmm. And this other specific event is more likely to do that. Now, mm -hmm. again, you got you have to correct me if if you don't think so I'm... So here's, here's one more thing. So after rage, when it went up, high all the way to eight or nine then all of a sudden it went down i felt numb in my body and then i just felt devastated and crushed and uh, almost like i'm nothing i'm complete nothing as in worthless worthless yes okay all right all right. Well, I, if it's okay with you, I'd like to do a little unseen therapist session. I would love to. On this. We're going to record it so you can actually go back and, mm -hmm. and replay it and probably plug in other things and so on. My guess is, Sadie, just as sort of a preamble here, is that this one specific event is not the only one we have to address. There are probably a series of these things where there was rejections and or at least you took it that way and right. and so on. So we get started with one biggie. We see what happens there and that gives you a launching pad. Does that seem to fit? Yes, yes, yes. Because can I add something here? Yeah. So um now when I when I'm in any relationship, it's just interesting. The sensitivity to rejection is just one part of it. Um, the the way I perceive the rejection, the threat of it, it's it's a completely different thing to me. If you, let's say, a person with secure attachment wouldn't take it as a rejection, but I would because I perceive it as a rejection. Am I, ma am I making sense here? Well... In a way, yes, but what I would do, at least for your conversation with me, is I'd, I would throw all these psycho-speak terms away, like like okay. Attach, okay. attachment theory. Okay. I mean, that's a bunch of psychologists getting together saying, we got to label this and label that and okay. label something else. <laughs> and I don't yeah. speak... I Just don't speak... for the lack of, of and other terms, that's the, that's the only reason. Um, I'm just trying to say that um, having that experience, I guess... Um, now I can't, I cannot differentiate the real threat from, from perceived threat. Everything yeah, is okay. rejection to me. All right. That, that, I just yeah. want to add that. Yeah. All right. Are, are you familiar with my metaphor called the tabletop and table legs? Yes. All right. I want to go over that just for the moment to make sure we're on the same page with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the metaphor. I mean, here's a tabletop. All right. A tabletop is supported by table legs. Mm -hmm. Remove the table legs, tabletop falls. Simple metaphor, okay? Right. Your tabletop, at least for this conversation, is I'm easily rejected. Right? Mm -hmm. um, that's supported by table legs, which are specific events in your life where there was rejection. One mm -hmm. of those we're going to work on now, that's your grandmother's statement. Mm -hmm. and her la and her laughing okay mm -hmm. so we're going to deal with one of them that isn't all of them it's one of them all right mm -hmm. um it seems to me fairly foundational okay mm -hmm. um but i wouldn't be surprised to hear other aspects coming up and and so on as a result okay but we're going to deal with one one okay. specific event all right okay now um, and, uh, the reason I, I bring that up is you say, is, I forgot the words you use now, but, um, you say when you're in a relationship and whatever kind it, it may be, 
you're quick to see the rejection in what somebody, however somebody else is responding. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. Yes. I perceive okay. like anything as a threat. Okay. I'm going to be rejected. All right. All right. And, and you will continue to do that mm -hmm. until you take the important specific events already in your past, including the one we're going to try to work on today. Okay. Re reduce those, remove those and so on. And the, the more you do that, the fewer of them replay in current circumstances. See, those things are replaying again. They hurt before. You don't want that hurt again, so you're going to do what you can to avoid that hurt, that feeling of rejection. Right, right. Okay. Do do uh, do this job well enough with all these all these uh, a bunch of other ones, and a current circumstance. It, it's not those things aren't going to replay anymore or replay much more mildly or something. And right. the current thing isn't going to be rejection. You know, run from this one because it's going to hurt. Right. That's yes. particularly useful in romantic things. I don't want to really get into a romantic thing because, you know, I'm going to get head over heels and then he's going to leave or dump me or something. And that's really going to feel bad. Okay. If, if, if that make any, uh, shed any light. So no romantic relationship whatsoever for, decades that's and how that, strong that fear okay all right all right because romantic you know they can yeah. get yeah. you yeah. can really get into those oh yes and you have a big love void which would be quite obvious here very yeah. expected given the circumstances and yeah. so i just he, want to point out that the okay the how strong it is that's okay it. all right okay and that's good. And the more you get out of the way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the less strong that will be. Exactly. And the more inviting becomes a potential romantic relationship. You know, I do I presume in there someplace that a romantic relationship would be welcome if you didn't have all that fear? I mean, why not? I'm, I don't feel like I'm too old yet. Well, you're not 50. To me, Sadie, to, <laughs> to me, you're a baby. Okay, I'm 82. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah. I mean, you're, and it's you, just, yeah. So you're, you're still in diapers. Okay? <laughs> well, thank you. That, that's the best compliment I've heard <laughs> in years. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the, but now I want to do one other thing before we actually bring in unseen therapists. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the more advanced things is the more you get into our course and, and practice and so on, the better you get at it. But that's what we call reframing. You're familiar with the topic? Yes, yes. Okay. So what I want to do is reframe a little bit. I want to discuss your grandmother and your mother for the moment. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know how much you know about your mother's background. I don't know anything about it, okay, mm -hmm. other than that she left you at around age 18 right. months. But she did have her reasons, I can tell you that. Whatever they were, and whether you agree with them or not, she had her reasons. She had her, what would yes. they be, What would they be? Uh, do you have any guesses? Oh, yes, yes. Um, so she left. Um, so my dad at the time, he was doing an um, internship in different in different country so she joined him so she oh, moved okay. to a different country to join him and to you know and to stay with him mm -hmm. oh, okay and as far as you're concerned as far as you know did she just say oh i've got i've got sadie as a child <laughs> who cares about her i'm gonna go or did she have concerns about that or didn't care she Do was have... uh, she was young at that time, she was in early twenties. She was young. She was naive. She was, she was um, suffocated living with her mother-in-law, who was a very difficult person to live with. So, in um, so that's understandable. I mean, of course, living in a different country with with your husband, young husband. I mean, it's way better than, than taking care of your child and living with a um, with a horrible mother-in-law. Okay. Um, so yeah. Okay. So. People, she made her choice. 
Yeah, people looking at that from the outside will have, will have different opinions on that. Some will say, mother should be with Sadie. I don't care what, because mother is a mother. and That's, you know, that's how I think. Okay, all right. Other people would say, like your mother would say, <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be with that mother-in-law. And yeah. the, the grandmother in this case uh, can do the job better than I can. I, I'm, I'm making it up, okay? But yeah. it's a rationalization perhaps, yeah. but she can do a better job than I can. I have my own love void. My husband, Sadie's father, is mm -hmm. filling that love void. And boy, do I ever need my love void filled and I'm going to go where I need to be. My daughter, Sadie, cries and poops her pants and I got to take care of all that. And I, who wants to do that? Right. Now, we're, we're not excusing the behavior. We are trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It may also be that her love void is so big mm -hmm. that it outweighs any love she would have for you, what we might want to call a natural love for a mother to have for her daughter. Right. Okay. That doesn't make you feel any better. Um, yes and no. I worked through this just on, on forgiveness part. Uh-huh. So I believe I am uh, at a, especially after she passed away, the forgiveness happened. Okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. Now, grandmother... Well, what I want to get to with, with the reframe with your mother, okay? Mm -hmm. If there is a remnant within Sadie someplace that says, I'm not worthy because not even my mother would love me. Oh, yes. 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 Absolutely. Well, but here's the whole... The, Let's talk about the whole sentence. I'm not worthy because not even my mother would love me. Okay. Now that's, that's, that would be, you're nodding your head. So that would be your emotional response to this circumstance. Mm -hmm. It is your, they were my words, but I assume they fit because you were nodding your head. It hits home. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's your emotional. Now, we want to get away from that because what we want to reframe that if we can, because that's you, that's you saying, in a way, because my mother didn't pay attention to me, left, et cetera, et cetera, my mother doesn't love me, which means I am worthless rather than my mother just made a, an unfortunate choice. It was a very different. Mm -hmm. Very different takes Fr on all framing. Yes. So, are you asking me which one am I still? Well, we're we're trying to get away from the fact I'm not okay. worthy okay. because my mother left yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And get to the point. There's nothing wrong with me. My mother just had too big a void, love void of herself, and. Right. The best she could and turn me over to grandmother who would do a better job than she would or, or something like that. Right. Right. So where are you on that? Are you are you worthless because your mother left you? Yeah, I still have that feeling. I mean, honestly, not okay. as much as I used to. I even thought at one moment, if I was just a little bit cuter, maybe she would stay. If I were and maybe a bit easier child maybe she would stay there well so there was a lot of like um thing that goes with you know not worthy enough um, well and, and maybe you're right maybe yeah. if you were cuter whatever that means okay yeah. <laughs> uh all babies by the way are cute okay <laughs> except they're all irritating too because they cry and <laughs> yeah and all of that. And need attention all the time. Yeah. 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 All that. And that would have been you need attention all the time. And your mother, I don't know your mother, but I can see your mother running off with the husband, you know. Um, 
But we're, uh, important thing, we're not excusing the behavior. We're trying to understand it, mm -hmm. which is a step towards reframing so that we get rid of the logic that you are worthless because your mother left. Mm -hmm. But are, are, are you, say this, I am worthless because my mother left. And tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does that feel to you? I'm worthless because my mother left me. Seven. Seven. Okay. Well, we will probably bring unseen therapists in on just that. Okay. Okay. Like, let's do that. Let's do that part right now. Okay. Okay. So close the eyes and, and take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. We'll be here a little bit. Okay. And uh, shift your focus to a, um, a loving moment. Mm -hmm. You nod your head when you're there. All right, good. And just, you know, with your eyes still closed, let me digress for a moment. Sometimes students misperceive this loving moment, they somehow seem to think we've got to have a Hollywood moment. Ah, we're going to access God or the unseen therapist. It's got to be done right or we're going to fail. And No, all you're really trying to do is align yourself with a simple little loving moment. Align yourself with the pure love that is unseen therapist. Okay. So now we're going to hand unseen therapist a sentence. Unseen therapist, I feel worthless because my mother left me. In fact, in fact, just say that. Just say that sentence out loud, could you? I feel worthless, unseen therapist, because my mom left me. Okay. And when you say that. Uh, what uh, do any of your physical symptoms show up? Mm -hmm. For for example, ha heaviness in my chest, and also I feel like numb in the leg area. Okay. All right. So we're going to use that as a metaphor for unseen therapists. We're going to we're going to hand this to her letting her know that there's this heaviness in your chest because you somehow found find that true to some degree to a 7 you find that true your mother left mm -hmm. and uh, that's why you are worthless okay. so there's this heaviness in your chest and this numbness in your hands and feet and your legs say it again only legs legs okay Numbness in your legs. All right. So in your mind's eye, just hand that to unseen therapist. She takes it. She has a nice, gentle smile. She knows why the very, very young you, and even the almost 50 you, would still carry that around. Logically, and I'm going to ask you this, Sadie, logically, is it true that you are worthless because your mother left you? No. Oh, you said that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So logically, it's not true. No. Okay. Emotionally, you're still carrying it around. Yes. You have an emotional response that way, but it, logically, it's not so. I'm saying it right. Yes. All right. So under unseen therapist understands that as well, but she also understands that you're replaying the emotional part in current time, and it's it's limiting you. This would be correct? Yes. Okay. So unseen therapist takes a look at this heaviness in your chest, the numbness in your legs. She smiles. She reaches out, she touches you. Do you like to be touched, by the way? No. Okay. Mm -mm. So she doesn't touch you. <laughs> or is it okay for unseen therapists to touch you? 
Mm, it's a hard one. Probably not. All right. Can she send a nice, cooling, healing, loving breeze your way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So there she is. She understands this. She understands the heaviness in your chest and the numbness in your legs. And she sends, in your imagination, just allow her to send a nice, cooling, healing, logical breeze in your direction. And it comes to your chest. It's very heavy, but that breeze, that understanding breeze, circulates around, and the heaviness can't survive with all that love. So imagine, imagine that heaviness. I'm gonna. This is my best calling it heaviness, okay, with some words. Mm. You don't have to do it. I'll do it for you. Mm. And now it gets lighter because of the breeze. Mm. Mm. Now let's do it again. Let's just do that again. Here's the heaviness in your chest. I am unworthy because my mother left me. Illogical. But the emotional response is still there. Here comes the breeze surrounding the her. Now, Sadie, on your own, and by the way, there are no grades for this. You don't get a A because you did it just right or a C or something. Else. What happens, happens, and we'll discuss it afterwards. Mm -hmm. But for, for the moment, just repeat that to yourself a time or two or three or whatever you think until you have gone as far as you can think you can go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's the heaviness. Mm -hmm. And so on. Repeat mm -hmm. and just open your eyes whenever you're done and we'll talk. Hmm. Very interesting physical sensation I experienced is that I really want to just to breathe in and breathe out, like deep breath. It's almost like I'm helping her and seeing therapist to push it away, the heaviness. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling lighter, definitely in the chest area. Well, give me a sense of how much lighter, like 20% lighter, 80% lighter? Um, I feel like I still need to work on it, but there was a shift, maybe 20, 30%. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, one reason we're recording this is you can go back to it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And you can um, hear all the other, the other reframes, which may not have landed as well the first time. Uh, they might land a little better as you hear them again mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. again. Uh, that would be not a for sure, but reasonably expected. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Now let's go to grandmother. Okay. Grandmother is sitting there laughing at you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're taking that as one big rejection. Why would grandmother laugh at you? What would be the her reason for doing that. So then she feels better. About herself? Mm hmm So she doesn't feel good about herself to begin with? I believe so. Okay. Well, that would seem very logical to me because I've had this conversation before, okay? And it was somebody who's doing that, as far as I can tell, and again, you always have to correct me. 
But somebody motivated to do there's a cause behind that. And the cause is unrest within her. And now she can project it out on a defenseless, essentially, child. Right, right. Okay. So I'm feeling bad about myself. And now I can lay it on you. Your mother left to go, you know, all this. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's somebody who's got a, you know, to hit hit a child with that, that's somebody who's got a really, to me, big unrest. But, oh, yes. Okay. So you might take that on very understandably as a young child as something's wrong with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not worth, I'm not, I mean, that would be a pretty standard thing for a young child who just does not have the, experience to handle that okay. exactly all right there there was no understanding of world nothing and th that's why all this thing it would internalize as guilt something wrong with me yeah okay now guilt's a good word guilt's a good word. I, I am guilt you're carrying around guilt something's wrong with me i'm bad i'm evil you were a bad girl was one of the words you were using earlier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh your mother left you because you were a bad girl and you'll never see her again. Ha, 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 ha. Th those are very vindictive words. Those are. Yes. I know. mean, um, so when I was like around seven, eight, nine years old, elementary school, I remember she once told me because she was so angry at me or at someone else. I don't remember the details, but she said something like um, your mother died. And they said, oh, I you know, it was it was a joke. It, it turned out it was a joke. So that that's the person she was. Okay, but she she did that to cause you some distress, apparently. Right, right, yeah. Okay. And I was just like crying, like I was. Oh. And then when she saw my reaction, she said something like, "You know, I joked or something like that." Okay. Nonetheless, the my term thud emotionally speaking happened mm -hmm. it hasn't been resolved <laughs> and we're being we have, we have competition apparently <laughs> a little bit is that okay well it's okay with me but I, I, I don't want it to disrupt you no it's okay with me okay just give me one second yeah she's okay who is it uh it's my daughter she was watching ipad so she um she, oh, she came out to tell me something uh -huh. so um, i gather from that you have had a romantic relationship but uh, it was a long time ago okay. she's a teenager yeah okay all right anyway So the contribution to your being worthless by your grandmother, I can really, especially if this kind of thing, it wasn't just one time, it was a string of things over time that would just build and build. Lots of specific events with grandmother projecting out her own unrest on you, you taking it on. Okay. See, that's a... That, Sadie, is a big foundation underneath all of this. That's why I say, you know, the tabletop and table legs, we've got more than one specific event mm -hmm. to deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the reframing is going to be useful. That's one reason we record this. All right. Okay. So logically speaking, should your, should your grandmother's many projections mean you're unworthy you're actually unworthy mm -hmm. i'm asking you that question yes okay let me ask you that differently okay because i'm not sure i i'm not sure i said it right it is very understandable why you would develop I'm unworthy emotionally speaking by your grandmother's many comments. Easy to understand. Yes. It would be surprised. Yes. It would be a big surprise if you didn't do that. Okay. I agree. 
any child, okay? Logically, I'm going to ask you, despite your grandmother's efforts, are you unworthy? Logically, no. Okay. No. So the answer is still the same, whether it's your mother leaving you or your grandmother's many, 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 many statements, laughs and everything else. Logically, you're as worthy as anybody else. Yes. Got it. Got a flaw or two, got a talent or two like anybody else. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, okay, so let's, uh, uh, as you're talking about this unworthiness with your grandmother and her statements and all that, are you having physical symptoms again? Less with grandmother. Mm -hmm. Less with grandmother. Now, don't let me impose this. But one possibility here is that the reframing we did with your mother has landed more substantially than you think because now that we're, we're talking with grandmother it just doesn't seem to have the same sting oh yes yeah okay so the work we did with your mother seems to be carrying over to grandmother on a reframing basis um maybe but also like the actions of my grandmother they're just like so out of even like for a child it's they just so ridiculous it's i mean it's so much easier to um not to believe what she did versus to my mother's action okay all right well with that statement i don't think we need to do any more reframing with grandmother um i agree because the word ridiculous uh says a lot Okay, mm -hmm. and it, came, it came out of you, and I didn't plant it there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's go to this um, specific event where your grandmother says, how old are you? Uh, at this time, your grandmother says this to you. Oh, oh, you're making this up. Okay. Yes, I'm making this up. I was okay. between okay. 18 months and two yeah. years old. Okay, 18 months. I'm making a note about that. Okay, make up. All right. All right, close the eyes. Close the eyes. We don't need to formally invite unseen therapists this time. She's already here. You don't have to go redo that, you know. And now we're going to we're going to turn your focus onto this event. You're making it up. It's something your grandmother likely said. Um and I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it here myself, okay? Your mother left you because you were a bad girl. You'll never you'll never even see her again. <laughs> so let's give that I mean you were talking about the emotion at that time being rage it may or may not be rage now because we've done some work on it but let's uh i have the idea of a, a metaphor of a volcano here and here you are doing your own life day to day but carrying around all of these unresolved emotional projections from your grandmother which keeps telling you you're not worthy, limiting you in all these different places in the laugh. And now we have this laugh come up. Ha, 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 ha. And so you, you get on a cloud. Nice, fluffy, white, beautiful, loving cloud. Sitting on the cloud with unseen therapists. And you're floating over this volcano, which is you, and there's this bubbling lava inside that volcano you're floating over the top of it and you can see that lava bubbling and it's going to come into rage pretty soon because it's it's it'll it'll erupt any time it's really big right. so you and unseen therapist look down 
An unseen therapist says, you know, that's your grandmother's words down there. It's also your reaction to it. But your grandmother really needs help. And I think from up here, you can recognize that. Would that be a true statement, by the way? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chief, it would also be a true statement if I presumed that your grandmother or one of your grandmother's biggest needs, if not her biggest, would be love. Would that be correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, she doesn't have that, and she needs to do something with that. And we're, while we're not, we're not excusing all this behavior, we're understanding it. We're letting go of it because that's just what she needed to do. We're not saying that's a good thing to do, but that was her need to do. She needs love. So Unseen Therapist says, let's, uh, this cloud we're on, it's just love. And it's endless love. We can share all that love we want. So let's just let a little love rain come out of our cloud and go down to that volcano where your grandmother is. All those projections, all that bubbling, and your rage. Okay. And let's let the love, something like rain, float down to the bubbling lava, the bubbling rage. And let's replace that lava with love as best you can, any way you want to do it in your own mind, Sadie. Mm -hmm. Down comes down comes the, the love rain, if you will. It hits the lava and goes, psh, turns into steam and comes up to replenish the cloud. And the cloud then gives more rain and psh, more steam comes up, and after a while, the steam just fades. And with it fades your rage. Just do that a while to yourself. Again, there are no grades. Let's just see what happens. And when you're done, open your eyes, and we'll talk. Mm. Wow, it was very powerful. I really like that visual, um, what you used as a visual. Okay, well, let me ask you, how are, uh, mm -hmm. how's your tight chest, your tight stomach? No, I don't feel any. I don't feel any. And I even, so my, I, I would not say rage for my grandmother, but the anger, it's just, it, it turned into feeling sad for her, which is a big shift for me. Well, that is a big shift. That's a, um, yeah, that's a, that's, if I hear it right, that's more of a loving response rather than I'm mm -hmm. worthless. Mm -hmm. Yes. Say I'm worthless and tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does that feel to you? I am worthless. I would say three. Okay. I'm I'm getting less than three, but you know, I'm not you. Okay. It's like maybe other aspects are coming up and things like that we haven't worked on. It's it's more like that here. Um, as it turns out, I'm looking at the clock and I'm I've got to get on my way. Unfortunately, okay. but um. Let me send you this. Well, first of all, do you have anything else you want to cover with me before before we so probably moving could? forward? I'm gonna watch again the the recording. I'm gonna do more work with unseen therapists and just see if any other aspects would come. And I'm just gonna keep working. Would that be okay to update you with my progress? Yeah, give me an email, but you're 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 also gonna to want to reread in detail the very last section of my book, The Unseen Therapist. Great. 
and make sure you're reading the latest version. It's, it's, it's the version on the website right now. Okay. Um, uh, read the whole thing if you want to, but the, most particularly that last section on the personal peace procedure and that sentence, very important, very important. Um, and any then, other any other points you want to give me when I work with unseen when I do more work with unseen therapists? Well, uh, the sessions that we just did with unseen therapists. Well, first of all, I would pay attention to the reframes. Um, okay. my guess is they may have landed a little better than what we originally thought, but we don't mm -hmm. repeating them uh, could be very helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also use what we did, the sessions that we did. It takes a little skill and a little creativity to do this, but you can plug in other specific events into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and use these sessions as sort of like training wheels. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you just go off on your own. Or so when you think other events, you mean that happened after when I felt rejected and abandoned? Is yeah, pr probably some more with your grandmother. Oh, oh, oh gosh, I have plenty. <laughs> well, yeah, but you'll, you'll find after you've done 5, 10, 15, really, really well with your mm -hmm. grandmother. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though there may have been hundreds, uh, they will start to fade because there's, there's a commonality. We call, it, we call it the generalization effect. There's a commonality, mm -hmm. similar people, similar tones of voice, similar locations, this kind of thing, okay? And so do some of them really, really well, and they'll all likely fall. You don't need to do hundreds. You just need to do a bunch of them really, 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 really well. And then there will be other things. Like a like a romantic effort, you got dumped or felt rejected. Oh, that one really hurt. Well, you know, you can use that one, okay? Mm -hmm. And teachers may have said something. You know, kids you know in the neighborhood may have said something. Thank you so much for your time today, Gary. Okay. I really, 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 really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.